What each person looks for in a pair of glasses is different. So today I'm going to be showcasing four super rare glasses brands that are all entirely different from each other and rating them according to our new SF score. So hi, I'm Robert, Starland Vision Consultant here at the Spectacle Factory and it's my job to pair you with your perfect pair of glasses. And that perfect pair of glasses is different for each of us according to our priorities. For some people, style is the most important aspect. For others, it's the durability. And there are lots of different aspects to what makes a great pair of glasses. And that's why we developed the new Specs Factor or SF score, which covers the five most important criteria for selecting a frame. And now we're going to be unboxing and reviewing these four glasses and giving them their own SF score. And we're going to start with the industrial pair, which is in this beautiful leather case. You would expect a leather case because these are produced by the Luca de Stael workshop. And Luca de Stael, if you don't know, produce handmade leather frames. But within that same workshop, they also make some incredibly minimalistic frames, such as the Industrial Springe series, constructed from a single piece of surgical steel with integrated springs into the arms. Now, you guys will know I'm not the biggest fan of spring hinges in glasses, but the spring mechanism within a typical frame like you would find from Luxottica or Marklin is completely different to this. This is a literal coiled spring, which is very durable. And that's been proven over the years because since around about 2019, when I believe Luca de Stael created the Industrial Spring Series, we have had zero breakages from this range of frames. And that is just almost unbelievable, really. When worn, that spring tends to really stand out and make these glasses seem that little bit more unique and a little bit more interesting. It looks like a piece of industrial design and the name industrial comes from the fact that Luca de Stael are doing things in the opposite of an industrial process because each of these is completely made by hand. Something that always earns points from me are the pure steel temples. Love that. And I love the almost vintage aesthetic that is modernized with this really sleek, minimalistic design. But there are other shapes within the series, quite a number of different styles, and each pair is available in either the gold that you see here, silver or black. And you do have the option, if you're crazy, of having silicon covered end tips instead, rather than the pure metal. So with all that being said, let's give these frames an SF score. So first up we have styling, and I think these frames are stylish in their own way, but I don't think someone buying these would have their primary focus being style. It, they're deliberately understated, and that is stylish in its own way. I do think these are cool frames, but are they the most stylish out there? Probably not. I'm gonna go with a six out of 10 for the industrial springe frames when it comes to styling. And when it comes to originality, I find that a very difficult score to give to this brand because I mean, that concept of having a spring literally built into the arm of the frame, it is ingenious and I love it. And it's a great piece of design. Having said that, the shapes within this collection are nothing groundbreaking. And of course, there are plenty of glasses brands out there that make their frames from really thin pieces of steel or titanium. So overall, I'm gonna go with a six out of 10, again, for originality. When it comes to craftsmanship, these are expertly crafted frames. However, they do lack a few details that you would get in a frame with some of the highest levels of craftsmanship. There's no detailing to the frames, there's nothing ornate about them. And in a way, that is definitely part of the aesthetic. That's certainly what Luca de Sale were going for. And I know that these frames are expertly built and completely made by hand. So with all that being said, we're gonna go with an eight out of 10. In terms of comfort, there are very few frames in the world that would rival these. I think it would be very difficult for me not to give these a 10 out of 10 when it comes to comfort. And finally, we have durability. As mentioned, I have never had one of these break. That being said, these are made from steel rather than titanium. It's just never going to be quite as strong. So if these were to take a lot of wear and tear, you might find that you might eventually break them. So I think we're going to go with a nine out of 10 when it comes to durability, that one point loss just for the steel construction as opposed to titanium. And that puts industrial frames at the top of the leaderboard with a SF score of 7.8. Surprised to see them beating Barton Pereira, but they are certainly more unique, that little bit more comfortable, and that little bit more durable as well. Moving on, and the next pair that I have to showcase for you today is the Walter and Herbert Fleming which is a very traditional shape that is just somewhere in between a square and a round. That makes it extremely wearable for a wide variety of faces. A lot of people feel instantly comfortable with the Fleming. 
but I just love this new colorway, this khaki green or olive green. And it's a cool frame that is still pretty classic. Walter and Herbert with their range of glasses is not going for anything groundbreaking. They're going for classic, quintessentially British designs that are well made here in England and feel good. They're just easy glasses to recommend and easy glasses to choose. So given that they are somewhat of a safe choice, it's gonna be interesting to see how that is reflected in the SF score. So first of all, when it comes to styling, I don't think you could say that Walter and Herbert glasses are not stylish, but at the same time, I don't really see any fashionable pieces within their collection. I'm gonna give them a four out of 10 when it comes to styling. There's nothing there that is like, wow, these are an amazing pair of glasses, but they certainly look good in an understated way. When it comes to originality, there's very little that I can think of that's original about these frames or the Walter and Herbert collection in general. Some of their most special pieces are either just beautifully made with titanium detailing on the temples or reissues of, for example, Winston Churchill's glasses, which is the Chartwell that we've covered before. And those pieces are pretty special glasses, but overall for the collection, when it comes to originality, there isn't really anything original about this range of frames. So we're gonna go with a two out of 10. Craftsmanship. Now Walter and Herbert are really well made acetate frames with no frills. Having said that, some little touches like the end piece just turning into like an amber tortoise shell, they didn't need to do that, but it shows a level of attention to detail that I really appreciate. The hinges are also really, really good quality on all Walter and Herbert models. That's something that I've noticed. And these frames look well put together. If a little lackluster when it comes to finishing. We're not seeing beveling or contours within the acetate. So with that all being said, I'm gonna go with a five out of 10 for craftsmanship. Next up, we have comfort. And Walter and Herbert frames, really comfortable for an acetate frame. Obviously they're not going to rival a steel or titanium frame when it comes to that level of comfort. But if you're someone who likes the feel of acetate, that secure but soft feel that you get from a real premium acetate frame, these are gonna be good. I'm gonna go with a six out of 10 for comfort. And finally, we have durability. Again, you know, acetate, any acetate frame, if you step on it, if you sit on it, it's gonna break. There's no two ways about that. That said, the hinges, as I mentioned, are very durable. We're gonna go with a five out of 10 for durability. And that gives us an SF score of 4.4. Very interesting to see that compared to the industrial springe frame. Next up, we have portrait. Now, portrait are Italian made frames that are based on the art industry. So as you might expect, these frames are super creative. Not least, the Robert. I picked it for a reason, not because it's called Robert, because it is actually a beautiful example of the kind of frames that Portrait are producing. The Robert has so much presence and so much originality, so much uniqueness to it. Everything from the shaping to the coloration to the cutouts at the edge of the shape, there's just so much going on here and so much to love. Whilst these are certainly not for everyone, if they are for you, they are gonna be your perfect glasses because there's just nothing else in the world like portrait frames. And that is true across the whole collection. I've not seen yet a portrait frame that wasn't super stylish and super cool. And some of the colors, I mean, that is just a gorgeous acetate. The likes of which I've never seen before. I like how the temples change thickness halfway down the side, but then get chunky again right at the end tip really, really nice design. And the fact that it's transparent that allows the gold metal inlay to be shown. I love how the keyhole bridge has these little cutouts that are mirrored at the temples and along the top of the bridge. That's beveled as well to catch the light even more beautifully. There's just so much to love. And I think that is gonna definitely be reflected in the SF score, but let's find out. So first up we got styling and how could you not give these frames 10 out of 10 when it comes to styling? Sure, they might not be your taste. They personally aren't my taste, but you can't argue that these frames are expertly styled and on the right face, the right personality, these are gonna be a top, top pair of glasses. When it comes to originality, of course, Portrait are super original as well. I'm hesitant to give them a perfect score for originality as well as styling. And I suppose the only criticism would be a lack of inventiveness with the materials because this is just an acetate frame and most of the portrait frames are pure acetate. So therefore we're gonna go with a nine out of 10 for originality. Craftsmanship and these frames are very, very well crafted. You know, some of the sculpting that I talked about in this model, it's almost like a sculpture that you can wear on your face. But that said, they do lack some of the very, very, very best finishing that you see from factories in Japan. These are made in Italy. And yes, they are one of the best brands that's made in Italy, but that is a limiting factor. We're gonna go with an eight out of 10 for craftsmanship. Then we have comfort and 
I would not lie and say that portrait frames are the most comfortable. As you can see, they're a very thick cut of acetate. That gives them a certain weight, which is not uncomfortable, but it is definitely noticeable. I think we're gonna go with a five out of 10 when it comes to comfort. And finally, durability. Just like with the Fleming, if you were to abuse these frames, they are going to break. Acetate is just not that strong. But that said, a thicker cut of acetate with incredibly thick hinges is gonna give you your best chance. So I think these are gonna be a fairly durable frame that's gonna to compare to pretty much any other acetate in terms of durability. So we're gonna go with a seven out of 10 for that. And that gives the Robert a 7.8 on the SF score. Finally, we have arguably the world's best rimless glasses, Flare. Handmade within a single workshop in Germany, Flare rimless glasses are some of the best glasses in the world, full stop. Not even just counting rimless frames. They're typically made from a material called BioSteel, which is a ultra flexible form of steel, but it's not that that makes them so durable as they are. It's also the mounting system, which is unique and proprietary to Flare, patented by them, which means that the joint between the frame and the lens is very elastic. That means that you can flex these frames and they don't work loose like most rimless glasses do. But this model is one of the new pieces for 2023 and there's two beautiful aspects to it. Number one, that yellow coloration that contrasts with the gray. That's just awesome. And secondly, we have that laser cut temple which gives these frames amazing flexibility, even more than most flare frames would have. It's a really cool piece of design that is very Germanic, as you would expect from a German company. Very angular with the shape, but I would definitely be customizing the shape and adding a tint to it as well, as I recommend with all rimless glasses. But if you like glasses that are almost invisible with a bit of a twist, you could wear them as they are. So let's see how our first ever rimless glasses do in the SF score. So first up, styling. It's hard to give a high score for a rimless brand when it comes to styling because they're just not that stylish. That doesn't mean they can't be cool especially when combined with the right shape and the right tint. But I guess that is you doing that to them to make them stylish. The frame as it sits, I would personally give a three out of 10 when it comes to styling. For originality though, you have to score flare very highly because there's just so many unique inventions within a pair of flare glasses. Not just that mounting system that I mentioned, but the use of BioSteel, which I'm not aware of any other manufacturer using. Things like the laser cut design of these temples and the color combination. I've not seen yellow and gray done like this in a rimless frame before. So I'm gonna go with a nine out of 10 for originality when it comes to flair. Next up we have craftsmanship. And it's hard to argue that the craftsmanship, the way these are put together is very, very good. But that being said, there are no embellishments, there are no frills within this frame. However, within the flair collection, there are some of the most beautiful solid gold pieces, buffalo horn pieces, where the craftsmanship is just off the scale. So I think Flair have to score very highly in terms of craftsmanship as well. And with that in mind, I'm gonna go with a nine out of 10. In terms of comfort, literally some of the most comfortable glasses in the world. For me, there's something about Flair that just stops them being in that top bracket. And it's very hard to put my finger on why. I'm yet to put on a Flair frame that just feels quite as comfortable as some of the very top tier eyewear pieces. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go with a nine out of 10 for comfort. And finally, durability. <laughs> I've just spent the last five minutes eulogizing about how durable these frames are, but they are still rimless glasses. And there is always that chance that you pivot them in the wrong way, you put the wrong pressure in the wrong point, and you could probably detach pieces of this frame. There's always that possibility. So I think that's gonna stop pretty much any rimless glasses from getting a really high score for durability. But if any rimless frame deserves it, it would be flare. And due to all of the things that we've talked about, I'm gonna go with an eight out of 10 for durability. Only let down by the styling. But if rimless glasses are the style that you want, it's very hard to argue against flair. And there you have it, four more frames added to our SF score rankings. It's been really interesting seeing how these all compare against each other in different criteria. I hope you agree. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, make sure to give us a like. Subscribe for more of the best eyewear content on the internet, as well as some of the rarest glasses in the world that we've brought for you today. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys, bye bye.